Hello YouTube, uh, this is my first video and obviously I'm going to do reviews of old wrestling DVDs which I have in my collection and here's my first video and bear in mind I probably will stammer a little bit because it's my first video and I'm a bit nervous. Uh, this is XPW's Baptized in Blood. Now for those of you who do not know what XPW is and to be fair most people probably wouldn't. XPW was a company in the Los Angeles area in California during the late 90s and early 2000s. I think it like started in like 1999 and ended in 2003, I think. Uh, it was run by a person by the name of Rob Black. He runs, he was at that time also running a company called Extreme Associates, which is a porn company that used to do some very hardcore porn. But basically, the story behind this, of the founding of this company, was Rob Black was a huge fan of ECW um, when it first started. The original ECW, not the WWE one that was watered down. And basically, he asked uh, Paul Heyman and said, hey, can I buy a share of your company? Paul Heyman refused, and Rob Black was like, well, fuck you, I'm going to start my own company. Which he, you know, filled with, it was way more violent than ECW. Not as violent as a lot of deathmatch companies now, say like CCW, Big Japan Pro Wrestling. Sorry, I'm, I'm going to keep doing this. Bear in mind this is live. <clears throat> uh, basically fill it with uh, as much violence as he could. There was a lot of violence, a lot of barbed wire, a lot of light tubes. And there was quite a lot of sexism because there was a lot of women in it. They brought in a lot of white people that worked for Extreme Associates. People like uh, Rob Black's wife. Uh, professional name was Liz Borden. I can't remember what her real name is. Uh, but this is the first King of the Death match that they did. And obviously here it's going to be Uh, sorry, I'm stammering a bit. Uh, it's the first ever King of Death match, so there's going to be a lot of violence in it. Uh, the match, the comp show starts with um, the two commentators, Chris Kloss and Larry Rivera, who I think are some of the worst commentators in the world. They make Don West and Michael Carl look good. They are horrible. I and the well, I don't really have much of a problem with Larry Rivera besides his stupid accent, uh, stupid sort of Spanish style accent. But that's not really his fault, so I'm going to let that one slide. But the one I really have a problem with is Chris Gloss, especially when you know a big spot in a match happens, he will just go ah! and just scream really loud, really high pitched. Sounds like a fucking girl. And he does this for any like really big spot, like someone gets thrown off a building or so into a table. So that starts. And the first match, I'm not really going to comment on the DVD's features, I'm going to comment on the matches of the actual card, was Kid Chaos versus Supreme in a beds of barbed wire and nails match. This was a good match to start the card. Really interesting. Fans got into it. In mind you, most of the fans there were like really obsessed with blood. Actually, this was the first time that they actually did a death match in uh, the West Coast, I believe. They actually said that a couple of times. I don't know if it's true or not. It might not be. But um, yeah, this was a good match. Good opening match. And um, good move in it. In Good move in it, I thought was very good. Was uh, Chaos did a Hurricane Rana through the barbed wire wrapped table, and Supreme went through that onto the concrete. Well, it wasn't really concrete, it was a wooden panel floor, sorry. Uh, one thing I probably had a problem with it was the botch that Supreme 
power bomb of chaos, but it was done really badly, really botched. But other than that, it was a good match, and the match ended with Supreme winning by doing a moonsault onto a barbed wire board that Chaos was underneath. Now, the next match was the Messiah versus White Trash Johnny Webb, and this was before the Messiah had his bum cut off when uh, Rob Black decided to send guys to his house to cut his bum off because he was working for CZW. Uh, this was a bum tack and ladder match. Uh, one thing I'll say about Johnny Webb is he's basically a Sandman knockoff. He basically comes to the ring carrying a big glass bottle of beer and a Singapore cane that he canes himself in the head with and he's usually drunk or stoned. And Larry Rivera makes a comment, comment saying, I tell you man, we, we've got to stop this man. He's a bad influence. It's the children of America, like any child, will watch this fucking show. It's really, I doubt any parent would let their kids watch it. If they are, they're fucking irresponsible. Uh, so this was a very hard hitting match. There were some very, very hard shots, with, like, particularly with like, single cane and the uh, stuff. It was very hard hitting. Uh, there was one spot that I thought was quite cool was when um, Messiah was going to go for a leapfrog, but Johnny Webb dropped and hit him in the nuts with a double drop kick. Well, with a drop, regular drop kick, both feet straight to the balls, and that was quite nasty. And it looked like it really, really fucking hurt. Uh, obviously, the ladder they brought in was basically a regular step ladder, not like the ones that WWE used, ones on both rungs on both sides. It was rung on one side, uh, and it had barbed wire on the top. Uh, they brought in the thumbtacks. Eventually, Johnny Webb managed to bring the thumbtacks and. First DDT them to it, which looked quite nasty. And actually, I think it probably hurt Webb just as much, just as much as um, it hurt Messiah. Uh, another good spot on it was a um, uh, sunset flip powerbomb off the top rope onto the front tax when Messiah did it. Tried to pin him, match didn't end. But like afterwards, the match ended with a crossbody by Messiah. He did a running crossbody onto him, which I thought. That's not a very good ending. It could have had a much better ending. It could have ended on the power bomb because honestly, that would be a lot cooler. Uh, the next match is John Cronus, a uh, former ECW wrestler, uh, wrestled as a tag team partner of Perry Saturn as the Eliminators, versus Carlito Montana in a bed of barbed wire and light bulbs match, where they basically had a bed of light bulbs, not light tubes, light, light bulbs. Uh, this was quite violent, but very short. The one thing I thought was really funny was uh, John Cronus said this to the fan, when the fan was giving him, saying something to him, he goes, that's not what your fucking mother said last night when I was banging her up the fucking ass! I laughed at that, I thought that was quite funny. Nice bit of fan interaction there. Uh, like I said, not really much to complain about besides the match being really short and it was essentially a squash match. Carly said Montana barely got any moves in and, you know, uh, Cronus basically just dominated. Uh, the match ends when Cronus powerbombs Carly to Montana through a table to the floor. Uh, the next match is Axel Rotten, another ECW guy. Versus Homeless Jimmy in a bed of nails and a bed of glass match. This was very violent I'm, because like, they brought in, this was a good old fashioned ECW style match because they traded chair shots, throw each other into the barricades, they traded shot, shots of cookie sheets. This is basically like an ECW hardcore match. The match ends with a chair shot where a uh, actual hits Homeless Jimmy over the head of the chair and he falls backwards into the pane of glass. It looked like it really, really hurt. Okay, and this next match is not part of the death match tournament and it's two members of a tag team called the West Siders, but one of them is not a member. I would call them the actual name, which is the West Side, and it ends with an N word. I'm not going to say it. But basically, this match wasn't that good. 
there wasn't any pinfall, the match just ended. And but one thing I'll say about this match is it's JM vs Chronic. This match wasn't very good, like I said. Uh, because JM takes a spear to the stomach and right afterwards he starts puking everywhere. There was I mean he started puking. It was disgusting and obviously it, it was one of the most disgusting wrestling matches I've ever seen. I mean, he was puking everywhere, and the match didn't end with pinfall, it wasn't a victory, well, sort of, <clears throat> because it was a run-in by uh, Mustafa from the, uh, uh, the Gangsters from ECW, it was New Jack's tag team partner, came in, they did a double Irish whip into a table which was put into the corner, and the match just ended, no sort of pinfall or anything, so I didn't really think it was really a match, it was more just a... Uh, here's the next match, and this one is for the tournament. It's uh, Supreme vs. Messiah in a bed of thumbtacks, barbed wire, and glass, not glass, sorry, nails match. This was a very violent match, very violent, lots of thumbtack usage. Supreme, basically, they beat the shit out of each other in this match. Um, could have been a bit longer, but other than that, uh, Supreme wins by doing the toad splash, which is his finisher. It's basically doing a top rope splash in a chair, usually put on top of his stomach, onto um, thumbtacks, that, onto the Messiah who was lying on his bed, with the thumbtacks that were supported up by two chairs. Um, he won the match by doing that. Uh, next match is uh, Cronus versus Axel Rotten, so two ECW veterans wrestling in this very, very short ECW style match where they were just trading, you know, barbed wire shots. And the match ends when uh, Cronus suplexes Axel Rotten into a barbed wire board. Okay, here's the next match, and it's non-tournament. And it was an uh, XPW title match between Chris Candito, the challenger, versus Damian Steele. This match was a false count anywhere match, so they're was quite a bit of outside fighting. I mean, they were throwing each other into the guardrails. There was a lot of stuff just throwing each other into the guardrails. It wasn't really a hardcore match, but there was a moment in it that I thought was pretty funny. It wasn't a very good moment, but it was funny. When uh, Chris Candito brought in a ladder, which is the same ladder that they used in the Messiah and Johnny Webb match, which obviously they used the... Uh, had barbed wire on top of it, because obviously most of the people in XBW are sadists. And... Um, he climbs it, and he was attempting, to, I think, to do a diving headbutt, sort of like a little Chris Benoit diving headbutt. But he slipped. He, even if he got it, he was nowhere near Damien Steele, and just fell flat on his face. And it just, it was so funny. But other than that, yeah, the match spilled outside for a little bit, and ended up in the bar, which is the area by the arena that they're facing in. And um, they trade punches on top of the bar and Damien still falls off the bar and uh, Chris Candito wins the match by doing an elbow drop off the top of the bar which was about six or seven feet off the ground. Next match is the final for the King of the Death Match tournament which is Supreme versus Cronus in the no ropes, barbed wire, beds of everything match, basically all the weapons that they used in the previous matches they would use in this match. Uh, one thing I mentioned about this is they bring in a guest ring announcer uh, and it's uh, the lead, not the lead singer, sorry that's what Chris Kloss thought it was, he thought he was the lead singer of the band Slayer, but I love the fact that he just goes, takes the mic from him and just goes, it's guitar! And then just announces the match then. Very violent, your typical barbed wire death match, very violent, lots of Lots of very nasty brutality. One thing I'll give to it, it was very slow paced, though, because both these guys were absolutely battered after the tournament. So they were very going very, very slowly, and, but it was still a very good match. Uh, I mean, one spot I thought was quite cool was uh, Cronus basically did a super kick and put Supreme felt backwards into the glass. I thought that was quite, quite cool. Uh, Match ends when um, Supreme climbs up a ladder.